Aplawoi are a maritime people that populate the islands of southwest Thailand, roughly in the area stretching from uh, Phuket in the north to Langkawi Island in Malaysia in the south. Uh, the uh, Oraklawoi, their history is, is quite complicated. They comprise uh, a range of ethnic groups that came together in the sense that uh, people populating the islands were joined by outsiders and together they, they are known as Oraklawoi. The makeup of the community here is, is quite complex. The original founder was a man named Tokiri. He came from Aceh, so he was not in Oraklawoi originally. He came here as a young man, he traveled these islands along the coast, he married a local woman, and eventually the governor of Satun asked him to settle here as a bulwark against the British who were, who were moving further north and uh, the Siamese who wanted to protect their claims to these islands. So Tokiri, he became the, the headman, the village leader, the Panghulu of this, of this community. He invited the Oraklawoi from the surrounding islands to come and settle the island together, and from that, we, uh, we see the community that has grown up around. That doesn't quite explain who the Oraklawai themselves are. The Oraklawai may be um, uh, local Aborigines. They could be Samang who lived along these areas before the area before the land was settled by Malays and, and Siamese. Uh, they could be Malays and Siamese who found that their life was better off here. So the Oraklawai they comp they comprise a, a very wide a variety of people. You can see it in their faces. Some people have a, a particular look, some people have a, a more Thai look, some people have a more Malay look, um, some people have a more uh, Aboriginal look. The same could be said for their culture and their language. They've borrowed from Thai, they've borrowed from Malay, and they've made something that's uniquely their own. The Orak Lawoi language is a dialect of Malay. Uh, they also speak Thai as well. The Oraklawoi are sometimes referred to as sea gypsies, which is not an entirely accurate description because traditionally they haven't uh, just gone on an endless uh, path wandering. What they've done is they've traveled from place to place. They've gone from mooring to mooring uh, in search of fish, in search of other types of harvests from the sea, uh, and come back as well. But uh, as a result of um, you know, modernization and uh, the growth of population in the area, there's nowhere for them to go except where they live today. They're limited to the, the island that, that they, they currently live on. The winds and the currents are very central to their lifestyles and to their, to their folk culture as well. In contrast with some of the, the uh, sea communities, for example those in Borneo, the Oraklawai live on the strands, on the beaches, rather than on their boats. The Oraklawai in the past, they used to construct their own boats. They would harvest wood from from the surrounding islands. They would harvest the pandanus leaves to, to, to make their sails. Um, since, oh, in the past 10 years or so, their ability to, to harvest wood has been restricted because this area has been declared a national park. Uh, so as a result, the Oracle way, they have to buy their boats. So they're dependent upon the merchants in the, on the mainland, in the towns, uh, who would lend them money to buy their boats and then they, they become uh, indebted to these merchants. And this has affected their livelihoods as well. The Oraklawai have a very special relationship with the environment, with the sea, with the, with the land that, that surrounds them. Um, so the things that they harvest from the sea and from the hills surrounding their, their villages have very deep meaning for them. And in their oral traditions and in their ritual practices, these things become, become uh, central objects of, of veneration. The Oraklawai are very skillful when it comes to the uh, fishing and harvesting things from the sea. They, they can dive to, to significant depths without the use of scuba gear. They can see underwater. They can do this at day, during the daytime or nighttime. Um, and they know about the times of day when, when they can harvest. Even the children are able to do this. The Oraklawai relationship with the environment is, is quite special and often their, their knowledge is handed down through generations and generations through oral traditions. There was an elderly woman, an elderly Oraklawai woman who told me once that her grandparents had told her, if you ever see the sea disappear, run for the hills. And uh, she had never experienced this before until 2004 when the tsunami hit this area. And uh, sure enough, the entire village ran for the hills and was saved.